So, you've learned GoDaddy, and you're hyped about your ambitious game project. Initially, you're adding cool stuff left and right, but eventually you grind to a halt. Sound familiar? It's because you front-loaded all the easy, fun tasks, and now you're left with the hard, boring, time-consuming ones. The thrill is gone, and you're slowly sinking into a pit of despair, only to abandon this project and start a new one, trapping you in a never-ending cycle. The key to breaking this cycle small goals i mean that's how i got my solo project predator isle off the ground i laid out each game system into digestible pieces terrain system check player system check inventory system check these small wins keep the momentum help you stay positive and show you're actually making progress to keep things organized lay out your plan in a tool like trello and you'll have a much clearer road ahead moving on let's tackle unrealistic expectations Stop comparing your work to AAA games. Those games you're drooling over are made by thousands of professional developers, artists, and marketers. Even the smaller titles have sizable teams behind them. The key is to scale down and manage your expectations realistically. Aim to create a project that's doable with your resources. If you're a solo dev, consider recruiting some friends or finding a group of like-minded people online. The shared accountability makes it less likely you'll quit and it's way more fun. Once you've started your project, you need to focus on what's important first. The core features. What if you got ideas for content tweaks or extra polish? Chuck them into a backlog on your project management tool for later. Why? Because polishing an unfinished or untested game is like putting lipstick on a pig. It doesn't make sense. You need to know that your core game mechanics are solid and fun before you start embellishing. Once they're finished, then you can think about those shiny ideas, if they're still worth pursuing. One time when I was developing Predator Isle, I spent weeks on a feature that didn't even make the cut. Lesson learned. Next up, distractions. We all love gaming or scrolling through social media, but these things can sidetrack us big time. You don't have to quit them entirely, but you shouldn't let them derail your work. What I do is allocate a specific block of time each day for what I call deep work. That's your time to hammer away at your project, no interruptions allowed. If you find yourself in the zone and want to keep working past that time, go for it. If you have trouble getting into deep work, sometimes a simple shower is enough to clear your mind and help you refocus. Now, on to motivation and discipline. And look, motivation is great for that first burst of energy. You're pumped and ready to conquer the world. But let's face it, that high is short-lived. To really see your project through to completion, what you need is discipline. That being said, discipline can be tough to enforce by yourself, given we only have so much willpower. This circles back to why having teammates or friends involved in your project is important. They'll help keep you accountable, making it a lot more likely you'll stick to your deadlines and goals. To wrap up, game development is a marathon, not a sprint. You've got to be smart about it. Set realistic goals, prioritize core features, manage distractions, understand that while motivation is a good start, it's discipline that'll get you across the finish line. So, get your game plan set and start building.